Hello, I get a lot of questions about optimizing your computer for sample libraries. And this is actually an extremely important topic because if you're gonna be investing hundreds or thousands of pounds or dollars on sample libraries, you're gonna to wanna to be able to use them. And so today we're gonna to be talking about really getting to know your sample library and looking at system requirements. We're gonna be talking about RAM. We're gonna be talking about storage and external storage. And we're gonna be talking about CPUs processors. Now this video is gonna be budget friendly. I'm gonna be talking about a little bit of something for everything. And we're gonna be starting with hopefully something that you can maybe apply today to help your system run maybe a little bit more smoother. And that's really getting to know your sample library. Before you buy anything, I would always check the system requirements. For example, ARM, BBC Symphony Orchestral Professional. Now this, I will admit, is an extreme example because it's a huge product. But also bear in mind, even if you're starting out small, that maybe one day you do want to get these bigger products and you don't want to have to upgrade computers halfway through. Uh, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Um, but for the most basic stuff like labs and a lot of free stuff, doesn't matter, off the shelf computers are more than okay for those sorts of thing. And if you're not thinking, oh, oh I'm not gonna invest in that, well, you, everyone's gotta start somewhere. I started on an off your shelf MacBook Pro. But anyway, I'm rambling. Always check system requirements, everything has them. This is one for BBC Symphony Orchestra. As you can see, 630 gigabytes is the actual file size. So you're gonna be wanting something like external storage. It does also recommend a certain amount of RAM, but generally uh, I would always follow the recommended, not the minimum, because at minimum you're gonna be chugging a bit. And as I said, here's a load of free samples as well, labs, Honestly, I was doing this on eight gigabytes of RAM on like an Intel quad, Intel i5 quad core, I think I had. And everything that comes with Logic, all the free stuff I used, it ran absolutely fine, absolutely smoothly. It's only when you're buying that biggest stuff that you really need to concern yourself with a lot of what I'm talking about but still good habits to get into. Now, once you've bought a sample library, there are ways of actually making them a bit more optimized uh, within your computer. If we jump into a Logic Pro X, I'll show you what I mean. So if we load, let's just load one of Spitfire's general patches. Uh, you can actually switch articulations on and off, uh, especially if you've got a huge orchestral template uh, and maybe this patch is only running maybe the shorts, we can actually go ahead and turn off all the articulations we're not using. And you might be able to see up here, we can see our memory, our RAM is going further down uh, the more we turn off. You will note as well, if I turn on another mic position, that instantly goes back up as well. So the more mic positions you've got turned on, the more articulations you've turned on, the more the patch is going to be taking up. And so you might have to make sacrifices, especially if you have a lower spec computer, you might be only able to use a premix uh, or just one of the mic positions or a couple of articulations. I know some libraries like this one, for example, the string solo does come with some uh, economic patches, which can be helpful on a lower spec computer, especially when I was running this library on an eight gigabyte of RAM laptop, those ergonomic patches really saved my bacon. Um, not only that as well, one other thing you can do, you can purge round robins on some products as well. So really get to know your library, Have spend a bit of time just going through it and seeing um, how you can make it run more efficiently. But this uh, transitions really nicely into our next topic, which is RAM, is memory. And let's use this as an example. So say I have uh, eight gigabyte of RAM computer. This patch is already using up half a gig of that RAM. So you can see how quite quickly after you've loaded a couple of instruments, your RAM is gonna get chewed up so really as a minimum, I would personally recommend 16 gigabytes of RAM as a bare minimum. What I use and what I would recommend for just about everybody is 32 gigabytes of RAM. That's what I have. I've done big orchestral compositions and have no problem. They do borderline on the about 30 gigabytes sometimes, especially those bigger projects. Um, but 
budget friendly wise as well even 32 gigabytes is a bit of a push money wise and it going even further up to 64 is quite unrealistic for a lot of people so i would say 32 gigabytes you're gonna be happy 16 gigabytes you might have to make sacrifices on certain things but generally you should be fine if you're using free stuff eight gigabytes is fine if you're using labs it's just when you're investing in stuff that it's going to start chugging and you're going to notice some issues. But a lot of it does also depend on your patch, how many samples, everything we've kind of talked about, articulations, mic positions, legatos as well can be quite chunky, uh, and how many instruments you're running. A lot is taken into consideration, but just remember every patch you have open, every articulation, every mic position is all taking up little bits of your RAM and it does add up very quickly. Now, this moves also quite nicely into another thing, storage. Now, what are the advantages of having external storage over internal? Now, I have one terabyte of internal SSD. If I was to get two terabytes, the money for upgrading internal storage, especially in the Mac and Apple world, is extortionate. I can't recommend having more than one terabyte internal simply because of the price. When external storage especially nowadays i was just looking at some prices and i'll show you in a second how cheap it is for a couple terabytes honestly it's it's outstanding and then go back five ten years ago it, believe me you don't want to know the prices i've probably paid for some of these items of storage so not only is it cheaper but sample libraries add up quite quickly especially in storage terms and uh, something as i said like bbc symphony orchestra is like 630 gigabytes I'm, i don't have space on my internal drive for that so not only are you getting more storage but you're also helping your internal drive by saving its life making it last longer you're putting less pressure on your internal drive and ultimately you're going to make your computer last a lot longer if you're using external drives now what would i recommend now originally i actually had a samsung t5 but they've come out with a t7 now and it's actually a lot cheaper uh, than i thought it was so for like two terabytes you can get something that will run at a thousand megabytes or a thousand fifty uh sequential reads uh, per second which is honestly ridiculous i was on half that with a t5 now you're going to want to be using an ssd you're not going to be wanting hdds because they're too slow and i'll show you what i mean if we very quickly go back into logic let's say i want to load uh another patch let's just go into a legato patch the cello legato and drop it in and then click yes now we have a load time if I was on a HDD, that would take so much longer. If I was opening a full orchestral composition I've been using, it would take 5, 10, 15 minutes just to open it because it's loading all the samples. You want an SSD so that it can think and talk quickly. And so everything can load and work and react quickly. So if we go back to the Tinternet. So this is one I would recommend, a T7 Samsung. Uh, and it's quite funny, actually, if you change the color, it can actually sometimes go cheaper. So be wary of that. Look at that, 114 pounds. You're saving six pounds, well, just about five pounds, actually, uh, on just changing the color for some reason. Um, but this is one I would recommend. Bare minimum, you, you're going to want two terabytes. If you buy a terabyte, you find, well, actually, I need two, and then you want four. So minimum about two terabytes another one i highly recommend and it's exactly what i actually use it's a little bit slower than this one i say a little bit it's exactly what i'm using on mine so you saw the load speed there that's what you're getting uh, is a samsung evo asset well you, you can see it on the screen um but you're thinking isn't this an internal ssd well yes it is and it is notably slightly cheaper but what i then add on to it is a drive enclosure uh, because what I find, you see that little bit there, especially with like the Samsung T5 or T7, it's generally the port that goes. And so if your port goes, you're done for. But if the port goes on this, well, my SSD is fine. All I need is another external enclosure. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I have this exact closure. I've dropped it probably too many times to count, and it's been absolutely fine. And even if it did break, uh, I could replace it because, fingers crossed, if I didn't drop it too hard, uh, the SSD is fine. I do not recommend dropping these, believe me. If they break, you're going to lose a lot of stuff. Just 
be careful with it. <laughs> um, but this is exactly what I use. I personally use a four terabyte, but I will leave affiliate links to all these products in the description. Uh, everything from the T7 to the Samsung Evo 5.7 and the external enclosure you can see when I last purchased that uh, and it's it's still going to this day so not bad in all honesty and I do use and abuse it uh, but yeah these are the recommend I would recommend Amazon eBay look where the best price is um, but they've served me rather well now moving on to the final thing I want to talk about and that is your processor now what I would generally recommend as a minimum is an i5 with four cores uh 2.8 gigahertz roughly because yeah, you're gonna have at least eight threads although generally an i7 with uh six cores and so that's about six, 12 threads i use an i9 eight core intel uh of course um but if you're using anything macbook wise an m1 and m2 you'll be absolutely fine those things are absolutely amazing but there are ways of optimizing your daw if you have maybe a small processor but a big project so if we move into logic now there's a way of monitoring all this stuff within logic itself if you go to customize control and display and under lcd you can see performance meter for your cpu uh, this if we then click up here and get the actual little screen we see the performance meter now if you know i get an instrument up uh, and start playing it you can see that one of the threads is of course being used by this instrument it's putting pressure on it if i had more instruments playing hopefully it would spread the processing out generally though it gets a bit heavy on one and i find by creating groups it spreads the load a little bit more evenly but uh, depending on your processor of course i have 16 threads it's an eight core so you can see i've got 16 individual lines there if we actually go into our settings so logic pro settings and go into audio this bar here uh, and audio we can see this io buffer size i'm currently set at 256 this buffer size uh, in basic terms is to do with latency so how quickly the sound from pressing it is then heard basically at the moment we've got this uh, 10.7 millisecond round trip so from hitting a key there's a slight latency and then we'll hear it now if this is small if i put it at 32 it'll be a lot quicker so if i like live playing generally i won't go higher than 256 so that if i'm recording something on top of something else uh, i'll have it lower so that when I actually hit it, it's actually in time and there's not a slight gap or latency. So I'll have it at, well, probably 128. 32 would be the dream, but you'll notice, well, right now at 256, we can see the processing thread there. If I now put this to 32 with a 1.3 millisecond round robin, which is amazing. If I now wait for that to apply and now start playing, you'll notice there's probably some clipping and it's, going a bit haywire so even that's a bit too much for me for this particular patch that I'm using but likewise if I put it at 100 well 1024 and apply and start playing look how small that processing is now for that instrument which is great uh, and especially if you've got a maybe a smaller not the best process in the world and you've got a full orchestral template especially for my really big projects I'm forced to turn it up to uh, 1024 but you do have that latency of 42.7 milliseconds which is not very good generally I try and keep it at 256 which for me is a nice middle ground you might have to have it up to 512 but this is something you can do today with your computer if you're struggling a little bit but it does help having a beefier processor because you'll have less headaches things will work a lot better a lot quicker you'll be able to keep that buffer size at a decent um, point 256 I'm very happy with that it's what I'm very much used to so that's processors but again look at system requirements see if they match up with your spec you can you know if you've got something maybe not as good as them as long as you've got the bare minimum uh, recommendations but i've mentioned my recommendations if you have any questions at all please let me know down in the comments uh, and i'll either 
create a follow-up video or respond to your comment. But I hope this has helped you. I have hoped there's something you can take away today and apply. Um, but thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.